China is using a U.S. aircraft carrier for target practice, as U.S. lawmakers make a surprise visit to Taiwan. And a Chinese economic collapse threatens the global economy. That and more on this week's China News Headlines. Welcome to China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. This week's China News Headlines. Big news that's sure to anger China. A delegation of American lawmakers have landed in Taiwan on a surprise visit, a trip reportedly organized by Washington's de facto embassy on the island. This is the kind of high-level official recognition of Taiwan that the Chinese Communist Party hates. Because the party has vowed to take Taiwan by force if necessary which the party prefers to call reunification of the motherland. Brutal invasion of a sovereign country just has a nasty ring to it. The identities of the U.S. lawmakers visiting Taiwan have not been officially released, but as of this recording, reporters have identified five out of the six. After visiting the presidential office and Taiwan's Ministry of Defense, the U.S. delegation also visited TSMC, the world's largest semiconductor manufacturer. The U.S. delegation left Taiwan Thursday night. I hope they at least got a chance to visit one of Taipei's night markets and eat a big old squid on a stick. I miss Taiwan. This was actually the second group of U.S. lawmakers to visit Taiwan this year. Back in June, three U.S. senators visited Taiwan, which likely irritated China. The Chinese regime showed its irritation with this latest U.S. visit by conducting military exercises nearby. Yep, while the U.S. lawmakers were there. The Chinese regime called the exercise a joint war preparedness patrol. You know, in case there just happens to be a war near Taiwan for some reason. And according to Taiwan's defense ministry, China has the ability to blockade Taiwan. A grave challenge. According to the defense ministry's report, at present, the PLA is capable of performing a local joint blockade against our critical harbors, airports, and outbound flight routes to cut off our air and sea lines of communication and impact the flow of our military supplies and logistic resources. This would make the U.S. defense of Taiwan extremely difficult. And speaking of the U.S. defending Taiwan, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken said the U.S. and its allies in the region would take action if Taiwan was attacked. He's not saying what kind of action because it's a surprise! And after the break, China's military is expanding. Welcome back. China's military might is expanding. According to a new report by the Center for Strategic and International Studies, China's third aircraft carrier could launch as soon as early 2022. This is a satellite image of what's being called Type 003. It's a major upgrade from China's previous carriers because of the two catapult launchers for aircraft. However, even if it launches soon, it will still be years before the Type 003 is commissioned into the PLA Navy and achieves initial operating capability. According to this latest Department of Defense report, the U.S. believes it will enter service in 2024. But this modern aircraft carrier marks a major step toward the Chinese Communist Party closing the gap with the U.S. military. The DoD report also says China now has the largest navy in the world. China's Air Force constitutes the largest aviation force in the region and the third largest in the world. And China's rocket force is capable of conventional and nuclear precision strikes. Gosh, I wonder if the Chinese regime has some kind of hostile intention. Are they possibly threatening war? Nah, let's listen to Wall Street and triple our investments in China. China is our friend. What's that, Shelley? Uh-oh. Tonight, some disturbing new satellite images show that the Chinese military has been using mock-ups of U.S. warships for target practice. The targets include full-scale models of a U.S. aircraft carrier and two destroyers. A Pentagon spokesman today said the U.S. continues to be concerned about China's actions. Wow, it's almost like a few years of cheaper made-in-China goods wasn't worth it in the long run. 
Although to be fair, shooting a non-moving mock-up of a U.S. ship that's in the middle of a desert might not be the most intimidating thing. That kind of target practice is like shooting fish in a barrel in the middle of a desert. We've been covering the chaos that's befalling China's real estate market. It centers around a company called Evergrande. The Hong Kong listed giant has become one of the most indebted companies in the world, with more than $300 billion worth of liabilities. And it's struggling to pay it back, sparking fears of a default that could send tremors through China's economy. According to a University of Chicago economist, China's economy is hitting a wall. It parallels the 08 housing crash. Evergrande's default could send shockwaves throughout the global economy since globalization tied us all together. Wow, it's almost like a few years of cheaper made in China goods wasn't worth it in the long run. So far, Evergrande's billionaire founder has been bailing out the business. But that won't work long term. Evergrande is staring down about $8 billion worth of debt obligations due to foreign investors over the next year. But our friends at BlackRock, remember the guys who told us to triple our investments in China, said there's nothing to worry about. The Chinese Communist Party will save us. One of their top investors said, the banking system tends to be controlled by the government. There is government intervention that presumably would come in. My sense is the government will act and my sense is it will stabilize. Well, according to sources who spoke to the Wall Street Journal, Beijing is working on a controlled implosion of the real estate giant, selling off some assets while limiting damage to home buyers and businesses. Hooray! We're saved! Except looking out for foreign investors isn't a priority. Oh. Wow. It's almost like a few years of cheap made in China goods wasn't worth it in the long run. But don't worry. Foreign investors don't need the Chinese government to look out for them. They totally know what they're doing. And what they're doing is buying up more troubled Chinese real estate debt. What could go wrong? After all, it's not like Goldman Sachs is buying troubled Chinese debt with its own money. It's buying troubled Chinese debt with your money. See? No problem. So why does Goldman think now is the time to buy Chinese real estate debt? because they believe the Chinese Communist Party is going to bail out the real estate sector. Goldman is also buying Chinese government bonds. This means they are directly funding the Chinese regime. Has anyone ever thought, maybe it's time to stop pumping money into the regime that's literally using mock-ups of US ships for target practice? Not Goldman. And after the break, Xi Jinping tells President Biden to cooperate. Welcome back. Ahead of a planned virtual meeting between President Biden and Chinese leader Xi Jinping, Xi sent a letter saying China is ready to work with the U.S. on condition of mutual respect. His letter said both countries will gain from cooperation and lose from confrontation. Cooperation is the only right choice. You know, when an authoritarian leader who controls the world's biggest military tells you to cooperate, it means cooperate. Fortunately, the Biden administration does not seem like they're going to cooperate on China's terms. They've extended a Trump-era ban on investment in firms tied to the Chinese military. Biden wrote to the U.S. House of Representatives, the PRC is increasingly exploiting United States capital to resource and to enable the development and modernization of its military, intelligence, and other security apparatuses, which continues to allow the PRC to directly threaten the United States homeland and United States forces overseas. Back in June, Biden actually expanded the scope of the restrictions to 59 Chinese defense and tech firms. Because since the Chinese Communist Party basically has openly declared war on the U.S., we at least don't have to help them build their military. And speaking of standing up to the Chinese Communist Party, NBA player Ennis Cantor is continuing his march through the Chinese regime's most sensitive topics. His latest move has been calling Taiwan a country, as well as saying Taiwan will never surrender to the evil Chinese Communist Party. And of course, the party hates this. But they probably hate this even more. In an interview with CNN, 
Cantor mentioned China's most taboo topic, forced organ harvesting. You know, I sit down with this concentration, you know, camp uh, survivor, and she was telling me about the, the you know, all the, the, the horrible act that they were doing uh, in there, how much, how many times that she has raped and uh, tortured before. And she was telling me about the organ harvesting and she was telling me about the surveillance uh, cameras. So when I, have, when I hear about these stories, I believe that God gave me this platform to be the voice, voice of all those innocent people out there who don't have a voice. When Cantor says organ harvesting, what he's referring to is the Chinese regime literally killing people for their organs which then they sell for tens of thousands of dollars. This has been happening for decades. And it's not some black market thing. It's happening in state-run hospitals. And the victims are people imprisoned for their beliefs or their ethnicity. The biggest groups who have been killed are Falun Gong practitioners and Uyghurs. But Tibetans and House Christians have been killed for their organs, too. So good on Ennis Cantor for talking about this. Let's hope more people do, too. And you may remember last year we told you about Zhang Zhan. She's a former lawyer and one of the earliest citizen journalists in China who reported on the initial spread of the coronavirus, which the party was not happy about. They sentenced her to four years in prison for it. At the time, when told that she could be imprisoned, Zhang quoted a passage from the Bible and said she would expect herself to die in prison. Well, unfortunately, she might not be too far off from her prediction. Her family says she might not survive the winter. Her brother jumped China's internet firewall to tweet about her plight. She's been on a hunger strike. Authorities have been force-feeding her. That's when they shove a tube down your throat or nose and pour things that are not actually nutritional down your throat, like salt water. It's a form of torture. Zhang is 5 feet 10 inches tall and now weighs only 88 pounds, according to her brother. Can anyone? really talk about cooperation with the Chinese Communist Party anymore? I think at this point, working with the CCP doesn't make you cooperative, it makes you an accomplice. And before I rage quit the internet, I'll answer a question from a fan who makes this show possible by contributing on the crowdfunding sites Patreon and Locals. Bruce Johnson asks on Patreon, Hey Chris, not too long ago I needed a fabric shaver. You know, those handy little gadgets that get the bumps off of clothes and furniture. I decided I'd attempt to take a stand and buy one not made in China. I was only going to buy online since I didn't want to spend an entire day driving all over town looking. The results were not good. 100% of the items where I could identify a country of origin were all made in China. Is there a resource for Americans to identify alternatives to Chinese made products? This was very eye opening. Yeah, Bruce, that is a major problem. I could probably do a whole episode just on Amazon and China. Did you know sellers based in China have fueled a disproportionate share of the growth on Amazon's third-party marketplace? And then you have issues like microwaves. Basically, all the different brands of countertop microwaves made in the same factory in China. And as we talked about today, a few years of cheap made-in-China goods wasn't worth it in the long run. Unfortunately, right now there isn't a great source to find alternatives to made-in-China products. On the bright side, things are moving outside of China. You see more and more things manufactured in Thailand, Vietnam, India, even Taiwan. But Matt Shelley and I have been talking about creating something like this to help people, like a website and a new YouTube channel dedicated to helping people find products that are not made in China. Does that sound interesting? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for your question and your support, Bruce. And thank you for watching. If you want to help keep China Uncensored going, you can contribute on Patreon or join our new Locals community. Links are below. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.